Um, I started really seeking and trying to figure out like what brings me joy and why I do what I do. And I think that's what we all need to come back to as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as freelancers, as artists. Uh, we need to come back to why it is, why we do what we do. Welcome to another episode of The Artist Report. I'm Braden Flynn, your host, and this is a recording from the February gathering of Connecting Things SoCal. Connecting Things is a once a month speaker series where we hang out with tons of creators, makers, designers, artists, photographers, and business owners. And then we have guest speakers who share insights into what they do and how they do it. This month's speaker was Jenna Rainey, who's a calligrapher, watercolor artist, stationer, and educator. She talks about what happens when your business becomes successful, how to enjoy the process, and not get caught up in the grind. Hope you love it. Just a little bit about what I do. This is some of my work and it looks really weird. Um, but I, as Josh said, I'm a watercolor artist, a stationer, a designer. I do pointed pen calligraphy. I also teach classes. I teach workshops. Um, I teach calligraphy, watercolor, and botanical illustration out of my studio in Costa Mesa. I don't know if you guys remember Costa Makers, the little Swiss people, the little Swiss, Swiss people, that's so rude. Um, but it used to be Costa Makers, and we took that space over in June, this past June. Has a photo studio that we rent out to photographers, and that's where I teach my classes out of. I do a lot of wedding invitations. Um, Stationery just launched a whole collection of cus or pre-made custom wedding invitations on my website yesterday. Um, but yeah, that's a bit about what I do. Um, I'm going to go through three lessons that I've learned just to give you a little summary of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to go through three lessons that I've learned pretty much the hard way um, in three years. I've only had my business for about three years, and I hope that's helpful for you to, for you guys to hear. Um, I don't want to just you know stand up here and ramble about my story. Um, I want to give you guys a whole look into the mistakes I've made and how that's brought me to where I am today. Next slide. This is me and my beautiful family. Is it really dark? Oh, okay. Um, that's my mom and her 90s pixie haircut. She's right here in the second row. What's up? Uh, and my dad and his swoop come over situation, me and my big forehead and my brother and his bowl cut and then me and a snowboard. This is just for demonstration of like, to show you guys, like, don't take me seriously because I look ridiculous in these photos. Um, but yeah, I grew up, my mom is an artist. She's uh, been painting since forever, whenever, you know, all the time. I grew up around art supplies, her painting. Both my grandmas are artists as well. Um, and that's kind of how what got my start in art. I'd never really took it seriously. I never thought of it as becoming a job in the future or anything like that. But it also was something that, I just grew up around and felt comfortable being around art supplies, using art supplies, but again, never really took it seriously, never thought of it as becoming a job one day. Um, and that's what I remember as growing up and um, just being in my history as a kid, loving being around art supplies and enjoyed doing that with my family and Music at the time was more of what my creative outlet was. And so I thought that was going to be a career one day. Um, and you'll find out soon. That was definitely a surprise. Uh, next slide, please. This is my husband in Chicago. So I grew up in San Clemente, just down the road. Uh, woo, yeah. And when I turned 18, I decided I want to move out and do my own thing. So I moved to Chicago. I went to school in downtown Chicago. Any Chicago fans? Go Blackhawks. Anybody? Yeah? Okay. One person and John. Um, so I, I lived in Chicago for about six and a half years. Went to school. I studied psychology. Um, actually, my first year of school, I was a major in, I majored in music and it just was not working out for me. Long story short, school is not my thing. I failed a ton of classes. So I switched to psychology and that was like what clicked for me. And um, I met John. This is John here in the front row. He looks a little bit different. These are the top left. Yeah. That's our wedding photos by Matthew Morgan. Oh, he's here. Hey, Matthew. Matt, whatever you go by. Um, so that was August 2010. We've been married for about five years. Um, but after we got married, we still lived in Chicago for a few years. I, got, I graduated with my psychology degree by the skin of my teeth. Um, thank you, Lord. And then, uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, I was working at a restaurant at, at the nighttime, at the night times. Um, 
I was working nights at a restaurant in a small bar in Chicago, and this is me waiting on Stephen Patrick Morrissey, who is a douchebag, which is common knowledge, but he drinks Peronis, and he likes cheese deep dish pizza. Um, And then this is me getting paid in $2 bills as a tip by a lovely customer. Um, So I was working nights, waiting tables, working at a small bar. It was lovely. I learned a lot about myself and about how nasty people can be and about customer service and all of that. And during the day, my husband was slinging snowboards at the Burton Snowboard Shop in downtown Chicago, and we were making $0. We made no money. It was horrible, but the best thing at the same time because Chicago is such a beautiful place, and we loved it. Um, But my uncle, who is a financial planner, out of the generosity of his heart, uh, decided that he wanted to offer me a job at his financial planning office in Anaheim out here. Uh, because he felt bad for how poor we were probably, and we were freezing our asses off in Chicago. So he offered me a job that was January or December of 2012. We moved to back here, out to California, where I'm from. Um, we got an apartment in San Clemente, and this is sort of where my career starts to take off. We packed everything up, moved to California. Obviously, things are in boxes, and we start unpacking our boxes in our new apartment in San Clemente. And I come across this box that's unmarked, and it's full of art supplies, like calligraphy pens, watercolor paint, old acrylic paint, and paintbrushes, and wasn't aware of whose it was or anything. And actually, as of recent times, we, me and John have been talking about it, and it might have been his brother's, which, side note, that makes the story less cool, because it's not a huge mystery. But at the time, it was a huge mystery. It was like, whose box of art supplies is this? Oh, my gosh, look at all this stuff. Um, And so I was working for my uncle during the day. I would commute about an hour and 15 minutes both ways in traffic. I hated the cube life. I was not made to be an administrative assistant or like sit in a cell under fluorescent lighting. It's just not my, it's not made for a lot of people, I understand, but I really, really hated it. And um, I eventually would come home and I opened up that box of art supplies and started just becoming obsessed with what was inside. I'd never done calligraphy before, except for like a little bit in junior high. And so I basically started teaching myself calligraphy. I started painting more and getting back into drawing and art, which is what I was familiar with doing when I was a kid with my mom. And I became obsessed with it. Um, I would literally, all my free time that I had, I would come home and just paint and do calligraphy. And I learned calligraphy by doing calligraphy. I learned watercolor by doing watercolor, and that's kind of how everything started. So, with a little pressure from, next slide, (laughs) with a little pressure and love, a little nudge of love from my husband, family, and friends, um, I started posting my work on Instagram. At first, I was like, why would anybody want to see my work on Instagram, which if you have time on your hands, you can like scroll really, really far back on my Instagram and see some really bad work of mine. It might take a little bit because I post a lot, but um, yeah, I started posting my work on Instagram because my friends and family were pressuring me to do so. And um, yeah, it's just weird to start off posting work on social media. You feel like you're boasting or bragging and like, hey, look world what I've done or like five followers, look what I've done. And um, so at first it felt really uncomfortable, but once I did it, I started getting hired for things like friends of friends were starting to book me for stuff. The likes were starting to trickle in, the followers were starting to trickle in. And I was like, hey, this is kind of exciting and fun. And I like this feeling of like people liking things that I do very like self-centered and like prideful thoughts. But um, so this is what brings me to what I'm going to be talking to you guys about is I've only been in business. So that was January, 2012. And I was able to quit my job with my uncle in June, 2012. So I only worked there for about five, six months. And it was all because of social media. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on social media and the lessons I've learned the hard way with social media and just how my business got started by accident, basically. Um, And then I'm going to go through two other lessons that I've learned by mistake, making mistakes through my three years of being in business. So we'll start with social media. So social media, let's get used to it. It's 2016, bitches. Just kidding. Um, So social media is how my business got started. Um, it, if you think about it, like advertising and uh, marketing and everything in the, I don't know, when TV 
started like 50s, 60s, whatever. I'm not a history buff. Um, but people sitting around their TVs and an advertisement would pop up, a commercial would pop up, and everybody's sitting around. That's how businesses got the word out about them. That's how people found out about how, oh, let's go to this shop or that place and buy this thing or order what order, whatever. So instead of that, if you think about what you're doing when you are watching your favorite TV show, like The Bachelor probably, um, I saw some nods from females. Um, what, what, what you think about when a commercial pops up, what do you reach for? What's the first thing that you reach for? And it's your phone, probably. And you, what you're reaching for on your phone is either social media or you're Googling something or whatever. So this is a huge chunk of time that people are spending on social media that we need to take advantage of. People are on their phones when they're bored watching their favorite TV shows. So this to me, once I started really taking advantage of this free advertising, this outlet of free advertising, my business grew exponentially. Followers is great. Likes is great, but that's not it. It's about advertising your business and getting jobs from it instead of treating it like a hobby. Like, oh, it feels weird though. Like posting my work, something I do that's kind of personal to me because it's art on Instagram and it feels like you're bragging, but you need to treat it like a business and the way you word your um, captions and everything on Instagram is going to be what conveys that message. So I started studying my audience. And if I think about what, who my audience is, I do a lot of wedding invitations. So I have uh, the age group of typically 20 to 35 year olds. And a lot of them are spending most of their time on social media on Sunday nights and Monday nights, because that's before the work week starts or just when the work week starts. And it's not Friday or Saturday nights when most people are out and about doing their parties and club and, and stuff. So um, Sunday nights and Monday nights are when I would post or when I still post the most about new product or, you know, releasing a class registration or whatever, stuff like that. So take advantage of that. What does your audience want to see, want to see and when do they want to see it? And think about your audience as if you're a business owner or a freelancer, whatever you are. And then my last point about social media, which it doesn't have a bullet point. Don't know what happened there. I'm really bad at making slideshows. So if we can just all get on the same page with that. Um, don't fear the hashtag. I don't, it's probably not the same anymore as when I started posting my work on social media three years ago, but I thought hashtags were so lame and they like cluttered your captions and nobody wants to see that. But once I started hashtagging again, I was a little push from my, from my lovely husband. Um, the more likes and followers started trickling in. And I know I keep saying that, but it's really not about the likes and followers. But that's when I started getting hiring, hired for things, uh, friends of friends, you know, spreading the word. And I started getting posted on wedding blogs, et cetera, et cetera. So don't fear the hashtag if you're a business owner um, or a freelancer. Don't be afraid to post your work on Instagram. So as that first year started phasing out, this is what I call the honeymoon phase of my business. Things did happen really quickly for me. And I know I'm saying like, I've only been in business for three years. Maybe you guys have been in business for five, 13 plus years or whatever. And things maybe have turned out a little bit slower for you or even quicker for you. And that's your own unique story. But just for me personally, um, the honeymoon phase only lasted for about eight to 12 months. Um, and it was exciting. I was posting work on social media and I was getting great feedback. People were following me and post reposting my work and it was super awesome. And uh, then I got my first disappointed customer email at like 11.43 p.m. one night. <laughs> and it kept me up until like 5 a.m. or something crazy. But you know, it's the honeymoon phase is over when that stuff hits and it happens to everybody, whether you're a freelancer, an entrepreneur, you own your own creative, small business, whatever it is, it's going to happen at some point. And this is just the ugly truth about being the boss. And that can, that can be the boss of people. Like if you have employees or it can be just yourself, your own boss. Um, and it's the ins and outs of being your own boss. You can go to the next slide. Um, so, Second year rolls around and I'm out of the honeymoon phase of my career or whatever we're, we're going to call it. Um, and it's, I, I'm thinking to myself, like, this is the best thing ever. Like, I'm so cool. Like, people think I'm so cool, like, on Instagram and stuff. Like, what? And I get to work when I want to and wear what I want to work because I work from home, basically. And I can, like, go places and work, like, if I have my laptop. It's so cool. And... 
Yeah. And I get to basically brag about myself on social media all day long and, you know, like, look at this amazing thing I made. It's, I sound really, really cocky right now. Um, but look at this cool thing I made or like this awesome coffee date I scored. And I basically get to do what other people do for fun as my job. It's amazing. But then year two, as it rolled, rolled around, Sure, I get to work whenever I want to, but that typically means 10 to 15 hours a day, all day, every single day. And I see a lot of heads nodding because you're in the same boat. Um, and that means weekends, holidays, and I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm not trying to be negative or anything. It's just the reality, and I think we all need to talk about it in this safe community because we all have a lot of this in common. And sure, I get to work from where I, wherever I want to, but that kind of plays into the whole, like, you work too much thing. Um, and I, while I do get to brag about myself on social media, and that's a huge plus, um, <laughs> that also means that social media has made me their bitch. And I, uh, like a couple times a week, will be scrolling through my Instagram and just muttering to myself, like, oh, I wish I would have scored that copy date or that gotten hired for that job or whatever. So it can be really isolating and discouraging to be your own boss. I know a lot of you can relate to this, freelancers. If you're a photographer, if you're an illustrator, or if you own an agency, if you have people working for you, um, I know a ton of you can relate to this. And I think it's important for us to talk about because mental health is a serious thing. Anxiety and stress and depression are some of the top reasons why entrepreneurs and freelancers quit after five years or even less sometimes just because it's too much to handle. And there's so much of like with social media and everything, the way we are kind of conveying ourselves, this image that we're putting out of ourselves, like, I'm so, like, this is what I do, and everything is pretty and styled perfectly on Instagram, and it's worded in the best way possible. Like, it can be really, really discouraging and isolating to yourself, the way you convey your message and the way we're kind of over-romanticizing the way we make money and the way we do our business. And I think the more honest we are, the more vulnerable we are, hello, um, with how we make our money, especially in this safe community, is going to save our mental health in the long run. It's good to talk about things. It's good to be honest. And so if you, you know, ask somebody, oh, how are you doing? And they respond, oh, I'm just really busy. Like, instead of just saying, oh, good. Like, that's good, right? Maybe maybe it is. That is a good thing. But Brayden, where's Brayden? Hi there, Brayden. His talk last month, little plug for you connecting things, people, um, was about hustle versus busyness and how busyness isn't always good and hustle is good, like grinding and hustling because you're passionate about it and you find joy in it. But being busy isn't always a good thing, so you should watch it. It's on connectingthings.co. Com? Co? Co. Um, but it's true. We all need to take our mental health seriously. If you're overly busy and you're struggling, don't just pretend like you're not on Instagram or don't just pretend like you're not in face-to-face -face conversations because, and there's a place for it. Like, don't just, you know, when your clients are emailing like, me, me, when your clients are emailing you, don't just say like, oh, I can't respond right now. I'm just like, I haven't eaten in two days and whatever. Like, there's a place for it and keep it in this safe community, but we need to be more open about it. So... As I'm, so obviously I've been in business for three years and as a like year two starts to roll out and I'm realizing like, oh, being a boss is actually really, really difficult. And it's not just about making pretty things all day and like getting feedback on Instagram that's fun and good and exciting, but it's way more than that. And um, I started getting really kind of stressed and not totally depressed. I don't want to sound negative, but just kind of upset. Like, what did I get myself into? Like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I opened that box of art supplies and started posting my work on Instagram. It's so much more than that than what I expected when I first started. Um, so it, this past year, especially earlier in this year, 2015, earlier in 2015, um, I started really seeking and trying to figure out like what brings me joy and why I do what I do. And I think that's what we all need to come back to as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as freelancers, as artists. Uh, we need to come back to why it is, why we do what we do. 
And um, we can get bogged down with the menial task of like, you know, back end stuff, admin stuff, like answering client emails, how to rectify a situation with the customer who's disappointed, um, you know, the little the duties that we have in our in our jobs, whatever it is that you guys do. So I wanted to come back to what made me kind of jumpstart into this career, and that is um, finding your voice and using your voice. So once I got back to this whole topic, which I realized finding and using your voice is like a really, it's like a buzz phrase. People say it a lot. And when I first heard it, I was like, oh yeah, totally. Find your, find your voice, use it. What does that mean? So um, when I would first think about like finding and using your voice, to me, what would pop in my head? I don't know what pops in your guys' head and if it's different, but I always thought of like, oh, that means like discover your style. You need to like stand out and be unique and like when I paint something, people can like look at it and say, oh, that's done by Jenna Rainey, Mauvoir, or whatever. Um, but that actually isn't the case. And the reality is like there's not there's nothing that's 100% unique in this world anymore. Like style-wise, there is nothing that hasn't been done before. We've all been inspired by somebody, whether we like it or not, or whether we're trying to be inspired or not. We've, we've been influenced. We've been we're influencing other people. So, and that kind of is discouraging. Like for me, just getting started three years ago, feeling like I needed to hustle and find out my, what my style is and how, what can set me apart from everybody else in the wedding industry or the creative industry. And what is that, that makes me different and unique. And really after a while, kind of grinding and trying to figure that out and discovering that uh, ever, anybody can copy your work, especially when you're posting on social media too much. So It's so easy to copy people's work. People are very talented and they will rip you off. And that's discouraging at times, especially when you feel like you've been working at getting your own unique style. But I came to a realization that nobody can work, nobody can, nobody can copy your work. That's the opposite of what I I came to realize. Anyone can copy your work and nobody can mimic your work ethic. So that's what sets you apart. It's not about what your style is or isn't or how it sets you apart in the creative industry, whether it's photography, illustration, writing style, whatever. Like it's all been done before. We just need to focus back on work ethic, how we rectify situations with clients when they're disappointed or the day in and day out stuff like taxes and, you know, bookkeeping, all that ugly stuff. That's really fun. So that's what really is our message and is our voice is how we handle situations in the day in and the day out in the struggle and in the grind, all these, all these fun words. Um, So I want to encourage you guys to shift your focus away from what you do and what your image is. Um, That was a huge mistake that I made and I'm still constantly making it. I'm a very bait. I'm like a little baby when it comes to owning my own thing and doing my own thing. Cause it's only been three years, but, um, I'm constantly making this mistake of like, I have this image, I have this following on Instagram or social media, whatever it is. And I want to keep this like cool. And I want to like meet with those cool people and like go to coffee with those people and like have fun. And I want people to hire me and like me, you know? So it's it's kind of a hard shift that we have to make and every you know it's like we're trying to talk ourselves up on social media so much and everything or in conversations and i think that it can be it can do a severe damage to us as business owners as freelancers and just as people and in our relationships with our spouses even and friends and everything like we need to do our work for the process instead of the outcome and this applies on the small level like if i'm painting something or doing calligraphy for something i don't want to focus on looking at what i want it to look like like the outcome and the result i need to focus on enjoying the process and then i'm going to be able to learn and take lessons from that and like learn from my mistakes inside the process instead of just focusing on, well, it's not looking like how I want to, and then start over. Just enjoy the process for what it is, learn the mistakes you're going to make throughout the process and redo it from there and start over and, you know, pick up from where you left off. And that's the same for business as a whole. If you're a business owner, um, if if you're your own boss, like Think about what makes you do what you do and why you love what you do. It's not about the outcome or the image or the way you look on social media or how your work is conveyed on social media or or your website or whatever. It's about why you do what you do and what got you started. And for me, it was that random box of art supplies, which I think and wholeheartedly believe was a total gift from God for me and 
to come back to that for me when I'm teaching classes um, to help people discover their hid their hidden talents and hidden creativity because everybody's born to be creative. Um, that is where I find most joy and my, my passion. And I think it's once you guys discover that and come back to that and stop getting so consumed with image, maybe you're not like this. Maybe it's just me and I'm just talking to myself. Um, that is where you're going to find and come back to joy because it can be so overwhelming to get caught up in the mistakes that you make day in and day out or like the hard grind that it is to be your own boss or to work for yourself. Or maybe you don't work for yourself. You don't, you're not your own boss. You work for somebody else. Like being a creative is just really hard because it's personal. It's your work. It feels very personal when somebody doesn't like it or if you're not performing well. So instead of thinking about the overall image and what you look like, I want to encourage you guys to find and use your voice, which is just going back to your work ethic and your process. Um, and then once you guys do use your voice or find your voice, um, it doesn't matter if it's a whisper or a shout. Uh, I just want to encourage you guys to be daring enough to find your voice and speak out. That's a rhyme. Um, <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> that's my mom's laugh in the front there. So anyways, that's basically all I have. It's, I know it's just my story and a few little points here and there. And I kind of like glazed over there a little bit. I don't know why it's like cold. I don't know. So, um, but if you guys have any questions, I would love to open the floor and get going on whatever you have. Thank you, Sarah.